Shannon understood it was futile to program a computer to look ahead at all future moves to win a chess game. There's too many paths to consider. So instead, he imagined a way to predict the future of a game before taking any moves. And his key idea was to define an evaluation function, which could tell you, given any board state, a score from minus one to plus one, how likely it leads to a win versus a loss. This evaluation function became better known as a value function. You provide your state, it tells you the quality of that state. To create a value function, Shannon started with some well-known chess rules. For example, piece count, having more pieces is better. Piece value, a queen is better than a pawn. Mobility, more mobility to move your piece, the better. How exposed your king is, less exposed is better. Each of these we call features, and together they can define an equation, which gives different importance or weights to each feature. And so given any board position in chess, his equation outputs a value for that position. And so with this value function, you can design a policy simply as follows. At the machine's turn to move, it calculates the value for each possible next move and takes the highest value move, known as a greedy strategy. Humans have something similar to this kind of value function. You can think of it as a feeling about how good a current situation is. And Shannon notes this is exactly what chess masters do. And masters develop an intuition about how good a position is without knowing exactly how they will play out. And while Shannon's method works pretty well, playing very average chess, Shannon notes it's fundamentally limited by the rules he created. He writes, the chief weakness is that the machine will not learn by mistakes. And he ended his paper with the quote, some thought has been given to designing a program which is self-improving. One possibility is to have a higher level program learn the weights or importance of each feature involved in the value function. This challenge was picked up by Arthur Samuel, who programmed a computer to learn the weight or importance of each feature from self-play exactly as Shannon had proposed. He worked on a problem harder than tic-tac-toe, but slightly easier than chess, checkers. Like Shannon, he used human-defined features of the game board to define a value function for checkers, which included piece count, king count, center control, and mobility. This resulted in a value function which multiplied each feature by a weight variable to define its importance. I've given these concepts to the machine, but not told it whether they are import important or not. But this time, the weights of each feature was not set by a human expert, as Shannon did, but learned from experience. To do so, he had the system play against itself with random weights attached to each feature. So at first it had no strategy. And he let the system loop through games like this, playing itself while continuously updating its weights. And by doing this, it changes its, the importance that it attaches to center of the board, kings and, and so forth. And as a result, it changes its playing tactics with time and actually improves. This gave the program what he called a sense of direction. And after enough games of self-play, he writes, it learns to play a better game of checkers than the person who wrote the program in just eight hours of machine playing time. But it wasn't yet a master player. At the end of his paper, Samuel identified the key next step. It might be argued the list of features I provided is too simple and the program should generate its own features. Unfortunately, no satisfactory scheme for doing this has yet been devised. Remember, game features like mobility or piece count are really just patterns in piece arrangement that we give names to. The challenge is to automatically extract meaningful patterns from perceptions that relate to winning. And it took over 30 years before somebody figured it out. It required a watershed moment which came in the late 80s when Yann LeCun worked on artificial neural networks that could learn to recognize human handwritten digits and it was able to do this because it learned features or patterns related to digits, such as curves or line count. After this result, Gerald Tessaro had a brilliant insight. He thought if multi-layer neural networks can learn to recognize 
digits, why can't they learn to recognize good game positions? And he famously wrote, a network which is capable of automatic feature discovery is one of the long-standing goals of research, since Samuel's checkers. He chose an even harder game of backgammon to advance research. Following Samuel's suggestion, instead of using human design features like piece count to define the value function, features would be patterns the network learned by adjusting connection weights between neurons. It worked as follows. He provided as input to a neural network a raw board description. It was the job of this middle layer to learn features or patterns of the game related to winning. Therefore, instead of using few human design features, it used thousands of machine learned features averaged together. This middle layer connected to a final layer of output neurons, which produced the value estimate of the board position. And the connections between these layers would adjust their strengths or weights during training. These weights determined how much each learned feature from the middle layer contributed to the final value estimate. And after playing around 300,000 games against itself, it started to play better than human. He writes, It seems remarkable that the neural networks can learn on their own how to play at a level substantially better than a computer system designed by the best experts. But how it played was most interesting to him. Its strength was in the middle game positions where judgment, not calculation, is key. That is, his neural network had developed intuition like the master's. And he wrote, this has apparently solved the long-standing feature discovery problem, what Shannon had dreamed of. However, there was not an explosion of results after this publication, because researchers found that learning a value function on highly complex games and continuous problems in robotics was impossible, because the learning process would either not start slow down dramatically, or even get worse over time. A key reason for this instability is that the value function is focused on position or state quality, not action quality. And so a key improvement needed was to train networks more directly on actions, 